what's going on youtube and welcome back to goal line hockey it's your boy kevin forte and guys we got a lot to talk about today man things have gotten very interesting in chicago we have to go over the chicago blackhawks as it seems like things have somehow gotten worse with their situation it started to bleed outside of the team and now it's affecting teams around the nhl outside of the blackhawks so we'll be taking a look at some of that today so obviously the big thing coming out you know for some of you it was yesterday at this point it is still today uh joel quenville the head coach of the florida former head coach of the florida panthers let go by the team this afternoon joel quenville has done a really nice job with the florida panthers to start this season they are 5-0. and They are one of only seven teams in NHL history to do so. And um, that's it. It didn't really matter. Success was out the window. It didn't matter. It Apparently, something came up in this uh, release statement the other day from the court filings. And uh, Joel Quenville, who kind of doubled down two days ago, has kind of now had to resign and he's been fired so i think it's more about what he gets paid in terms of whether he was fired or resigning um but at the end of the day not a good look for joel quenville who like i said all summer he said he didn't know what was involved he didn't know what was happening then you know he doubles down on that this week after the filings that were that pretty much told us he did know what happened and he said let's turn up this is a bad time for this let's turn a blind eye to it and we'll worry about it later that doesn't really work too well and the fact they have enough evidence to prove that uh makes it just that much worse and we we're talking about the other day in the video i made you know it's going to taint what we saw from this blackhawks dynasty which is a shame because it's not fair it's not the fans that, you know, have remembered what the Blackhawks did during that time, um, what some of the players have done throughout this time, you know, past the 2010 run, those two other cups they've had since then. Um, it all just seems like it was kind of, um, you know, it's just you get lost in everything that's happened since then to remember what happened, you know, and just how good those Blackhawks teams were. And here we are today looking, I mean, I'm just going to give you guys a couple of things. Um, so this was from Joel Quenville. He released a statement with deep regret and contrition. I announced my resignation as head coach of the Florida Panthers. I want to express my sorrow for the pain. This young man, Kyle beach has suffered my former team. The Blackhawks failed Kyle and I own my share of that. So, I guess if you want to look at it one way, he's taking responsibility for it. He's taking, you know, um, you know, he's he understands what he did in this. But at the end of the day, you know, until this stuff came out about Kyle Beach, um, he has been extremely quiet. And pretty much the things he has said is basically he had no idea what was happening. And again, now with this stuff with Kyle Beach, that pretty much sunk anything for Joel Quenville uh, right now with the Florida Panthers. And like I said, I mean, last year was a bad year for the Florida Panthers, but they are, you know, in my latest power rankings, they were the best team in the NHL. And now they lose their head coach just like that. Excuse me, not 5-0. and We're way past that. The Florida Panthers are currently 7-0. and The best plus minus differential in the league plus 18 and they're one of the only teams so far to have won have won each of these seven games so far scoring four plus goals in each of those contests that's incredible this is a team that can score goals Bobrovsky standing on his head and they just have the right group and now you just have this huge distraction now that Joel Quenville is out now the good news is for the Florida Panthers is they play tomorrow night in Detroit, so they're not going to be home. Uh, they play in Detroit. Detroit actually looks pretty good this year, and they have to play Boston on Sunday, so it's a pretty quick turnaround for this team. I was hoping maybe they would get a day off. No, no, they don't get any days off here, uh, but then they're off Sunday. Uh, they're off Monday, uh, Sunday and Monday, um, 
so it gives them a little bit more time to kind of rebound and kind of just take in what's happened. But who's going to be the next head coach for the next three nights or for the next two nights? And then, like I said, they don't play again. It's looking like they're going to get a pretty nice break here. They will play at home against the Washington Capitals next Thursday. So they're going to play Friday and Saturday, and they're going to get five days off before they have to play again, which is probably for the better for the Florida Panthers. Now, the problem is they got to get through these next two games. And if they lose their next two game, one of those next two games, it's going to all be blamed on the assistant interim coach, which isn't fair at all, but that's kind of how this thing works, unfortunately. Now, in terms of who is replacing Joel Quenville at this point as the head coach, um, right now it's going to be an interim tag, and it's the assistant coach of the Florida Panthers. Um, as Andrew Burnett will be the new assi- uh, the head coach of the Florida Panthers for the meantime, and that was according to Pierre Lebron. Now, the big name that's been swirling around the Florida Panthers since this quote-unquote resignation of Joel Quenville is John Tortorella, who is currently with TNT right now. There are rumors swirling that he is the top guy right now for the Florida Panthers as the next head coach in Florida. So he'll be going back to the Sunrise State. He won a cup with the you know in Florida, not with the Panthers, but with the Tampa Bay Lightning back in 2004. Can he have some of that same success with the Florida Panthers? Maybe, right? Maybe, just maybe. Uh, so that is an interesting thing to keep an eye on going into this weekend. Uh, this Obviously, this whole thing with Kyle Beach is, you know, uh, this is from Kyle Beach. Uh, he said the Chicago Blackhawks are attempting to destroy his case in court. Um, it, then Jonathan Tace apparently had a comment on Bowman and McIsaac. Uh, in quote from Jonathan Tace, Stan and Al, they're not directly complicit in the activities that happened. It's not up to me to comment on whether they would like to deal with it differently or not. I have a lot of respect for them as people. They're good people. So, again, it's one of those things. This reminds me of different things I've seen in the sports world. We've seen it before. Again, I always bring up you know, certain examples, but we saw it with... I see it in college football. You saw it with... Um, some pretty high-end schools. I mean, I, I know right down the road, Penn State had a huge situation with this. The head coach wasn't directly involved in the allegations, but because he turned a blind eye and didn't say anything when maybe he knew something, that was enough for everybody to kind of turn on him and pretty much put him in the same class of guilt. And I think it's one of those things where it, it's very it's a tough it's a tough situation it really it really is and then we saw another quote here from the Blackhawks captain Taze we wish we could have done something differently myself included my heart goes out to Kyle for what he dealt with wish I could have done something it's not an excuse looking back but the truth the truth is a lot of us were forced or were focused on just playing hockey again it's if you're not a professional, it's hard to put yourself in that, you know, that frame of mind because that this is like their life. You have to understand that too. So for them, and again, Jonathan Taze at the time, let's remember he was one of the youngest captains in NHL history, especially Blackhawks history. So like this was still a very young core at that time. So a lot of the young, you know, these guys wouldn't have said anything in the locker room because they had to protect themselves. Is that fair? Is that moral? I, that's up for you to decide. It does. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, that is what happened. And I think we're just kind of seeing the fallout now, now that evidence has been provided. And now I wonder what's going to happen here with some of these core players that are left. Jonathan Taze and Patrick, Quain, uh, Patrick Kane. He, he also had something to say. Patrick Kane called the Bowman and McIsaac ousters necessary moves. And the right moves. He also called Bowman a great man who did a lot of things for me personally. Again, he gave these guys these mega million dollar contracts. So for these guys to sit here and say that they're bad people. And I mean, it's a tough situation. It's not anything that I, and you know, nobody envies that position. Um, But with that said, now that Stan Bowman and McIsaac are gone, 
We've already talked about the thing with Joel Quenville. We've gotten some quotes from some of the players that really the only two players left. We'll get into the third one in a minute uh, up in Edmonton, Duncan Keith. But now we're starting to hear about some potential rumors for the next general manager in Chicago. We know this is a very coveted position in the NHL. This is one of those spots. You got an original six franchise that is showing some potential of moving forward and going on the up. You have the Rock, you know, you have the Wards family, which we know that they are very invested in this uh, organization. Again, with all the Stanley Cup championships recently, they've got a good core fan base. Um, so definitely people are going to be looking at this job. And Jim Rutherford, Scott Mellenby, and Kyle Davidson are potential candidates for the Blackhawks job. That's from Frank Saravelli, a uh, pretty big hockey insider. So Jimmy Rutherford, I don't know how people would feel, or Jim Rutherford. Jim Rutherford is probably a name uh, Blackhawks fans are probably thinking. I probably don't want to see him with how he ended things in Pittsburgh. He kind of seemed like he was getting a little, I hate to say it, like a little old and senile, making some weird trades um, that you were wondering if if he was sober that morning. But And then you're in some interesting ones like Scott Mellenby, a former NHLer. Uh, Kyle Davidson has been around a little bit as a scout. Uh, and then we also heard some other names from Mark Lazarus, a Blackhawks insider. Kevin Weeks is a potential candidate for the Blackhawks. Uh, his blend of old and new school could appeal to the ownership. Not to mention, let's be honest, there is that PR attachment. I, I'm not going to get into that, but you guys probably know where I'm going with that. You know, One way or the other, I don't really care. But that is something that could be applied to that situation in particular. Um, another name we heard from Mark Lazarus. There would likely be interest from Eddie Olchek in the Blackhawks general manager job. Again, not really too much information on that front, but Eddie Olchek's name will definitely be thrown around. Again, a former Blackhawk, he will be in that conversation, and he is a former uh, scout management guy in the Blackhawks organization. Another big one we heard from Lazarus is Jeff Gorton, the former uh, general manager of the New York Rangers, another guy currently on the broadcast side of things at TNT. You know he's a good general manager. Obviously, things didn't end well with him in New York, but this is a guy that has built up a pretty good group there of players. Um, so Jeff Gordon could be a guy that we look at and say, yeah, that could be a pretty attractive option for the Blackhawks. Another, game, another guy we've been hearing a lot about every time there's an opening uh, in terms of a general manager vacancy. Mike Gillis always thrown in there uh, as potential general managers for the Blackhawks. Adding to that, kind of going with the PR spin on things, uh, Megan Cheka is a potential candidate as well. Uh, the team was also looking at her uh, for POHO. I don't know what that means, but uh, that has to mean something. Um, but again, it's you're kind of taking the PR angle as you could probably figure out from that as well. So that's the kind of stuff you're looking at. There's a lot of names being thrown out there. We've even heard uh, from Darren Drager, who is a pretty big insider, that uh, he suggests that the Blackhawks should maybe give a call to the New Jersey Devils gen uh, general manager, Ray Shero, uh, former general manager. He was let go, I believe it was last season. Uh, so Ray Shero obviously is a big name. He helped win those championships in Pittsburgh. He built up a pretty good Devils team. I mean, again, the results haven't completely been there yet for the Devils. That's why he doesn't have a job. But he is a pretty big name in the hockey world. Um, and we know that does mean something. And then now we start to get to more of the fallout from other guys around the league. Uh, Kevin Cheveldayoff, who was the assistant general manager to Stan Bowman, of that 2010 Chicago Blackhawks team. Uh, Jets general manager Shevel Dayoff will meet with Gary Bettman on Monday. So uh, that was according to Pierre Lebrun. So is he the next one to go up to the guillotine? Because Joel Quenville had a hearing with Gary Bettman the other day. And he is now no longer a head coach. So you wonder what's kind of at stake here for Shevel Dayoff. I don't know what information they have. I don't, because I know we were hearing publicly there was stuff with Joel Quenville. I haven't really heard too much about Shevel Dayoff. Maybe if they have more information on that, we maybe don't know. Uh, that could be a situation for the Jets as well. 
Um, we really haven't heard anything from the Montreal Canadiens side of things. Uh, their general manager, Mark Bergevin, was also a, I believe, head of amateur scouting or also an assistant general manager with that Blackhawks team. And he's kind of in a weird spot, too, because he's on the final year of his deal in Montreal. You wonder if the Habs are kind of waiting to see what happens with that first before they go through with maybe extending him or any team out there decides to take Bergevin. They probably want to know the information on that, but we haven't really heard his name thrown around, so I assume he's okay. Uh, but then we also heard, uh, according to uh, Ryan Rashog, Duncan Keith, who is currently with the Edmonton Oilers. Now remember, he was a big player on that Blackhawks team in 2010, one of those core players, one of the better defensemen on this team at the time. Duncan Keith declined to be interviewed by the law firm as he didn't believe he had anything to contribute, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it was one of those things he just wants to distance, distance himself as much as possible from the situation. He's still a current active player in the NHL. He probably doesn't want this distraction during the regular season. There's different angles you could look at for this, uh, but it definitely isn't the best look. Uh, as he said, he didn't know anything about the allegations previously, and he didn't believe he had anything to contribute. That's basically what Duncan Keith said. Uh, but this this is going to be interesting how the dominoes are going to continue to fall here because uh, I just I don't think this is the end. And now with this whole Kyle Beach thing coming out, you know he's identified himself as one of the victims, alleging he was assaulted by a former Chicago Blackhawks video coach. Uh, which obviously we all know who that is, which is Brad Aldrich. So um, it, it just continues. So we'll see what happens. It's been a big day. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, former head coach, Florida Panthers, uh, most recent head coach, fired, resigned. That was what is put in the press, or he was resigning. But we all know he would have been fired if he didn't accept, accept the resignation. Uh, so he's gone. Um, now we're going to start hearing about Shevel uh, Day off this weekend. Duncan Keith declined to comment. And now we started to hear some stuff from the star players for the Blackhawks. Uh, Jonathan Taze, the Blackhawks captain at the time, still captain, uh, you know, had a little bit to say. And so did Kaner as well. So, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below as this continues to boil over. I've got a couple questions for you guys. One, who will be the next general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks? And two, who will be the next head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks? Are we looking at a situation where John Tortorella gets another opportunity, potentially with the Florida Panthers? That would be very interesting. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.